I uh, actually went to school uh, for architecture and majored in architecture, which is a five-year program uh, in the U.S., and uh, did a year of city planning, but I also um, did a minor in fine arts. And uh, it, it, it kind of, uh, I, I had a professor from England who was visiting, and he really um, got me interested in abstract painting but the reality is when I moved here about 1972, I had some sisters in financial debt and so I did a lot of watercolors. In fact, I did about 2,000 watercolors. Today I have 31 series. Uh, they all revolve around a, a particular interest. And um, why this show is so diverse is it has pieces from 10 different um, series. Most artists would not do that. In fact, I didn't do it for years. I would only do one series and have a one-man show, solo show someplace, or a two-person show, and I just put one series. And then there was a continuity. Uh, so it may look a little odd to see uh, compositions and subject matter and, and then mixed media, which um, is a, a, probably a growing part of my uh, art portfolio. I was very lucky to have an uncle who was well known in Los Angeles and he took me around when I was about 12 years old to see um, some of the painters of the day. One was uh, Diebenkorn who became uh, very, very well known nationally. And um, I went to New York uh, during uh, college uh, to, f to make a film in New York because I won a a competition to uh, shoot a film and uh, the New York uh, University there uh, provided a student who was also in film to, to help me. The, the film was shot there, it was about a 10 minute film and at the end we had a couple hours and he said, hey, you're interested in art, you want to go over to uh, Leo Castelli's gallery over on 77th Street. I said, Leo Castelli, the premier at that time, uh, New York gallery. And so we went over there and Robert Rauschenberg and uh, 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 Jasper Johns, who did the flags and the numbers, were all there. And uh, they were nice enough to chat with me for a while. So I, when I came back to Ohio State, I decided to go back into art and get a minor in fine arts. And the fusion of fine arts and city plan uh, fused with my architectural career and I found a lot of um, sort of symbiosis between the two disciplines. Um, so, you know, somebody says, well, why couldn't you have just brought one series or two series to this show? I um, thought about that, but I didn't have enough of any one series, and I wanted to have at least at least 40 pieces. Uh, I've created and sold out of 5,000 pieces, 94% of my work, 2% I've donated to charities, and so I only have about 4%, and that 4% is about 180 paintings, and there are lots of different stuff, but not all of one. So that's why it's probably confusing to some of you because you're probably used to coming to shows and seeing a lot of continuity. So. And originally, before I got a lot of medical problems the last three months, uh, I envisioned um, some more work of that style. But basically, all the paintings I do are pretty much um, not of things and landscapes now, but it's more abstract and it is more um, created in my mind and then executed. And even when you execute it, it varies. But in most cases, the images you see are pretty much the images I see. And it's a, a process where it's a relief to unload it then have it sitting in your mind and you can't go to sleep. So you get up and paint it and say, okay, now I can go to bed because it's not, you know, it's not bugging me. <laughs> so uh, for me, uh, art is a uh, uh, kind of a, a relief.
to unload creative thoughts and get them done and move on to the next thing. I do want to end with uh, a story. When I first came here in 1972, uh, Ed Roebuck, who won Best in Show, I think that year, at the Boardwalk Art Show, um, uh, convinced me to come in the next year's show. And I had uh, uh, primarily drawings, and I also had mixed media. I, at that time, uh, got some awards in, in both um, areas. But the show is memorable to me because a young lady who was about 14 years old uh, came by and saw these uh, surrealistic drawings with the sky and the water coming up and embracing uh, children and uh, young girls uh, in a uh, sort of theatrical way. And she looked at these six and spent about an hour there. And then she came over and talked to me and I thought I was talking to a, uh, a poet who was about 30 years old and was uh, very, very intelligent and sensitive. Um, the next day, uh, she came back, but she was kind of weak. And the day after that, her mother called me and said, my, uh, my daughter uh, likes your work and she particularly likes one piece that had special meaning to her. And I said, well, I know which piece that is. And uh, so I brought it over because she wanted to purchase it. Um, and while I was talking to her mother, I could see on the stairs, she was sitting up there listening and I looked over and so she came down and she just had this serene but beautiful smile and she sort of hugged the piece. And uh, so as I'm walking out, her, her mother writes a check for the piece and I said, this, this experience was priceless. I, I don't want the check, take it back. I will remember this as the best sale I ever had. I tried to tell this story about a couple of years ago and I couldn't get through it. Every year at this time, I think about it. That was 50 years ago. And it is a, a memory that I will cherish till I die. Anyway, end of talk. But you can ask me any questions. <laughs>